Hi, I'm Tom Ashford from the Self Publishing Formula, and this video is all about the difference between a series and a serial. Now, it's a question that I've seen crop up quite a bit in both the Facebook community and on our YouTube channel, which is what's the difference between a series and a serial? Now, I'll be honest, I hadn't really given it much thought before. There were either books that were completely standalone or there were books that shared a sort of universe and an overarching narrative. But of course, there is a difference between a series and a serial. It's just that nowadays the line has become a bit more blurred. The simple definition would be that a series is a collection of books that can all stand independent of one another, even though they share characters and a world and even possibly some story elements. Whereas a serial is a series of books that must be read in order for the story to make sense to the reader. So serials first started becoming popular back in the 19th century when printing costs were becoming cheaper and reading was developing into a widespread pastime amongst all people within all classes as opposed to just those who are very wealthy. And lots of newspapers and magazines started putting stories into their issues. And of course, it wasn't practical to put a whole novel into one issue of a newspaper, so instead they published them in instalments. And this meant that an author only had to write part of their story at any one time, and could even tailor the next part of their story according to how their readers had reacted to the last part. Charles Dickens famously published some of his books in this manner, and then years later Stephen King even published his book The Green Mile in instalments. Nowadays it's a lot more fashionable than back then to write stories that are all sharing the same world and all set in the same sort of narrative. And with self-publishing becoming so popular, it's never been easier to get one's book out towards your readers. The traditional serial format has actually gone out of popularity as, as of late, but that doesn't mean that people aren't still writing in that style, even if they don't realise it. I certainly didn't. I actually have a trilogy out, which either has volumes 1, 2 and 3 in the title, and until recently I didn't even realise that it was actually technically a serial rather than a series. And Luke Jennings did a similar thing with his book Codename Villanelle, which you may know as the TV show Killing Eve. He actually wrote four novellas that were all published in a serial format and then brought them together to make the book. Let's take a look at a few more examples of series and serials or the modern equivalent of a serial at least. So Terry Pratchett's Discworld books are all set in the same fictional world and they all share numerous characters that might crop up in each other's books, but each book can be read completely independently of any of the others, even if it kind of follows on from another one. For that reason, it's a series. The books all belong to the same franchise, but they can be read in whichever order you like. The same can be said of the James Bond novels, in that although James Bond turns up in all of them, and sometimes the enemies turn up from one book to another, you could pick up a copy of Goldfinger, or Doctor No, or Moonraker, and you could start from there. You wouldn't need to read them in the order that they were written. On the other hand, the Harry Potter books are an example, technically, of a serial, in that you wouldn't be able to pick up the sixth book and suddenly know everything that you needed to in order to understand the story. The implicit idea of that is that you start with book one and you work your way through until the end of book seven. And that's part of the appeal. You know that it's going to take time and multiple books to reach its ending. Now, of course, Harry Potter is still a series. It's just the serial format of a series. Now, it can be important to inform potential readers of what kind of series or serial they're getting into. Cliffhangers were a key part of the original serials because it meant that readers would finish the instalment and be desperate to find out more, which would lead them to then buy the next issue of the magazine or newspaper in which that story appeared. And of course, there are still plenty of readers who get to the end of a book, find out there's a cliffhanger, and are perfectly happy with that because it means that they go on to read a whole other book. Uh, that People like getting into franchises. That's why big film franchises are much more popular than standalone stories in the cinema. Once people become invested in a franchise, the anticipation for the next part of the story becomes part of the appeal. But not everyone feels that way, and there are plenty of people who will get to the end of a book and be kind of wound up if they have to then spend $4 to buy another story just so they can find out what happens. Now that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with a serial by any means. Obviously no one got to the end of Harry Potter 3 and went, oh what, I've got to buy a fourth one. Like, it's kind of a given. But it does mean that you might want to forewarn your readers in some way, in a subtle way preferably, that the story they're buying isn't completely standalone. 
are you selling them an 80,000 word story in that franchise or are you selling them an 80,000 word installment of a story? As I said, you don't need to just put it into your blurb or title. If we as writers don't always know what a serial is, how can we expect our readers to? But as with any book, make sure you're targeting the right customers because satisfied customers lead to positive reviews. Okay, so that was our video on the difference between a series and a serial. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe by pressing the button below and leave a comment about whether your last book was a series, a serial, or a standalone. Till next time.